Welcome back once again. Uh, sorry for the interruption, but um, uh, we were going on about uh, that issue. Uh, you remember the issue we're talking about? Absolutely. Uh, well, I was saying this. We don't get the mercy of nepotism mm -hmm. to enter the marketplace. Yeah. We have to go through all the developments, mental stages. Mm -hmm. So when you have a Boris and this phenomenon of Etonians, mm -hmm. they have the blessing of all of the bridges being laid before them. Yeah. So they know exactly what their pathways are. Yeah. So you have your pathways into education. Mm -hmm. You meet the greatest leadership. Mm -hmm. You have your pathways into masonry. Mm -hmm. You have the greatest education. Mm -hmm. You have your pathways into career. Not only do you have the greatest education, but you also have those who are going to grease the doors to make you enter the halls of power. Yeah. We don't have that. Yeah. Which is why I always say there's no substitute for lived experience. Mm. That great wealth of experience, mm. the cumulative wealth of experience yeah. going across all of those grassworks organizations and the individuals who've not only started and sustained those organizations, yeah. but then those they have trained, which is the legacy. That cumulative power is the power base of our nation. Now, when we recognize that, it's mainly about signposting who those organizations and organizational leaders are. Mm. That is clarity. So when you think about 2 million people in London, yeah. that means there's a great number of organizations that we need to signpost. Mm. Now, when you signpost them, we now use digital tools. Yeah. We use digital CRM tools mm -hmm. to manage projects in real time. Yeah. So if you are one of these regional chairs who are deputies to the national chair, okay. Now, you understand that CRM software, you work with your deputy, you're now managing all of these local organizations. And just like in any borough, they have a national, they have the local borough community yeah, meeting, yeah. which is between the fire brigade, the police, the schools and um, the local authority. OK. Our local authority mm. is the monthly ADPAC meeting. OK. Now, now there's something about... Okay, you've, the selection is done. The people are already there. That's great. And uh, 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 everything is set up and it's running and you're getting regular meetings. Mm -hmm. the, the, the key thing which I have been looking at, how you're going to market APAC, mm -hmm. just not, not just here in the United Kingdom, but abroad as well. How are Absolutely. you marketing it? How are you marketing it? Because I, I'm looking at... Um, uh, uh, the organization as it is, as a whole, and uh, with all the regional uh, 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 office components, components yeah. that will make it up, it's great, mm -hmm. and on paper, on and, paper reality, exactly. and reality, it's, it has to be a reality. How? How? Uh, how how, do how lies it? in the personnel? Yeah. So you see with your track record, mm -hmm. remember, we live in the digital age. Yeah. Even the fact that we can broadcast this message to the masses mm -hmm. matters. So everything we've been doing for the past four years mm -hmm. is already in the world. Oh, yeah. We yeah, already yeah. have global delivery partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same way that with the African Diaspora Council, mm -hmm. with Dr. Louis Tin as the prime minister, mm -hmm. with Queen Diambi, who introduced me to everybody, mm -hmm. the economic minister, the, she's the health minister, the prime minister, mm. and the tech minister, was coming from the understanding of social media. Yeah. These are great tools. Now, when you look at this in an institutional way, mm. every single activity that we have, mm. we put into the digital stratosphere. Yeah. Now we're global, aren't we? Mm. So oh, you yeah, can yeah, see yeah. the black yeah. print happening right in front of you. Mm. Now, all you've got to do is reach out to one of the contacts in the website, mm. and now you're actually involved. You're having a real-time conversation with real people mm. because we don't have the phone lines like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can wait in a 30-minute queue. No, immediately mm. you're conversing with a peer. Mm. So if you've got the capability of delivering that on the ground in your territory, yeah. well, there's no price for that because we desire to have international delivery partners. So that is the structure for the charity. Okay. That is the structure for the trust in which we purchase commercial freeholds mm. because the key ingredient is working as sovereigns. Mm. So because we have a sovereign underwriter, yeah. all of the trustees and directors have mm. the ability to become sovereigns. Mm. Now, as you become a sovereign, you're no longer a citizen. Mm. 
All right. That means you're no longer paying tax. Ah, you're ah. no longer a citizen within society. Okay. Now you sit outside of society like oh. the 1% oh. as a custodian. Right. When we understand this internationally, you see, once you understand the rules and regulations, you're no longer breaking the rules. No, you're not. Now you create the rules. Yeah. Then the key is that we set up the... Um, the sovereign territories inside African nations. Mm. So just like you have the city of London mm. and you've got the church, mm. as you set up that sovereign territory and you put a town hall on it, mm. that now acts as its own principality. Okay. The key mm. is that enough of us create this web mm. to trap our economics within our own economic circle Mm. You see, you can't work as an individual. No, you can't. It has to no, be it an has ecosystem. To, it's, a, it's a team. It's a team effort. So let's put it like this. Mm. What is racism? Mm. What is racism? You try to define that. Um, I, I can I'll define it. For you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Racism is a team sport, mm. aggressively played by an offensive team, mm. using business tactics created for warfare yeah. to acquire limited resources whether they're ours on the continent, whether they're ours in their nation. So if racism is a team sport aggressively played by an offensive team, mm. how would we possibly hope to combat racism mm. as individuals? Yeah. Now, you can circumvent racism by creating your own ecosystem. Okay. Because now, you see, the principles of racism are going to have very little effect on you mm. if you're not employed by Europeans if you don't seek finance from Europeans, yeah. if you don't seek education from Europeans, if you can now inform the political process mm. that Europeans operate under based on your numerics and your organizational skills. Because power isn't numeric. No. So-called Jews in this country number 246,000 nationally. Wow. And we number <laughs> 2 million in London and 3 million nationally. So we can agree that power isn't numeric, mm. it's organisational. Now they've got exceptional organisational structures, okay. operated by mediocre people. Mm. <laughs> Our role Idiot is to establish me mediocre people, exceptional yeah. Yeah, yeah. organisational infrastructures, yeah, yeah. so that any job within our civil service mm -hmm. can operate. Yeah, I can That's see. The game. I can see how. Good. Now, there is a statement here which I read, mm -hmm. and it, it's part of the uh, of what you people are going to do, and it's part of what you plan to do uh, as as an organization, yeah. APAC as an organization, and part of what the organization wants to achieve is provide coordination ad adversary lobbying that will enable us to revise to reverse our relationship of dependency on institutionalized. Afrophobic, Afrophobic, Afrophobic yeah. and racist society, yes. where we find ourselves uniformly at the bottom of every measuring metric. Measurable, measurable, measurable metric. metric. We are institutionally so uh, we are an institutionally solution body created to create cohesion between the diaspora and region of the African Union in order to create cohesion and enable our collective social economical growth mm -hmm. how is this going to be achieved because if you're going to fight the the the, the history mm -hmm. of racism which has been which is partly 500 years 500 years old you know mm -hmm. and you bring in institutions that are practically meant to be racially uh, racist in a way, this is something which a son who is born here, uh, uh, of an English father, uh, from uh, uh, as you Rose described, the, the Boris Joshua studied in Eton mm. and so on. The, the structure of it all is, is, is it's like a culture in Africa, whereby somebody uh, uh, from Eton, somebody from Cambridge, those huge institutions that you know they have gone there. They've been institutionalized with their brains in, 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 in a certain way. And here you are. You are you're trying to get that out of the way. I, I look at it. I, I could give an example like in Africa. Corruption is at the core. Systemic. In, 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 in the blood. Mm -hmm. Now, 
If it's, it's in means, the DNA. It's in the DNA. If you have to get the tag, you have to get the DNA out. It's, it's, it's attached. No. And, and this is you what... You don't have to get the DNA out. Yeah. <laughs> what you must do yeah. because is separate... This statement makes sure... From that, that body. Mm. You see, mm -hmm. if... What does a surgeon do mm -hmm. when you have cancer? When you have a cyst? He gets cancer something. Cancer or cyst? Yeah, he gets what that What does a surgeon out. do? Yeah. He gets, he gets that cyst out. It, it okay. gets the, yeah, he gets it out so, so that it doesn't infect other parts of the body. Yeah. yeah. So now, mm. Europeans traditionally, mm. on our conscious and subconscious mind, mm. within our consciousness, within our society, mm. have been that cancerous cyst. Yeah. So you must separate the body from the cancer, yeah. which means that the body has to become self-sustaining okay from those enzymes that create cancer <laughs> you must stand alone yeah and do you know why adpac is a membership based organization yeah that we intend to build out to a hundred thousand national membership mm. because at five pound a month mm. if we build it out to a hundred thousand membership mm. that's half a million a month mm. to remunerate our national and regional leadership mm. and also save and use as leverage funds okay. to purchase commercial freeholds mm. which gives us the autonomy that we've always spoken about mm. but you've got to know what that looks like practically right mm. yeah it looks like a body of expertise mm. that you pay from inside how mm. five pound a month is a micro payment mm. it's an insurance payment yeah 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 what yeah. if ish and unfortunately, as African people in the diaspora, ish, mm. will always happen. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Knowing this, mm. it's only self-preservation mm. to become a member of ADPAC. Okay. To one, be able to attend the monthly meetings mm. where you have surgeries mm. with that national and regional expertise. Mm. The same way you go and have surgeries with your MP. Of course, yeah. So yeah. now if you have a problem in your school mm. because your child is receiving afrophobic racism based on even the infraction of their hairstyle mm. now you can go with an advocate to the school oh yeah right, yeah all right yeah. your act is quo, okay okay and it's okay. quashed okay so it is not our intention to fight racism mm. that is to engage with a system mm. it is to circumvent racism mm. by creating our own eco system right which is why the national expertise goes across economics politics education health housing media and the justice system okay so for instance when a young man is murdered by a european young man in a gang of 14 european young men yeah. pushed in the river and the cps tell you we don't think it's in the public interest to prosecute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And immediately we can raise 10,000 for a private prosecution just to instigate a private prosecution mm. and then raise another 30 grand for a case. We do that. Okay. We okay. tell you how the justice is going to play out. You don't tell us. Mm. So I'm going to give you another equation. So after 70 years of the Windrush generation mm. being in the United Kingdom, we should have been celebrating. 70 years of the Windrush generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. They created the hostile environment just to let us know the state of the union. Mm. And then they kidnapped and deported those who built this barren little island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the government said, we stand as the defendant. And the defendant tells you when you're going to turn up, mm. how much we're capping the payments at, mm -hmm. who's going to receive them, mm. how they're going to receive them, when they're going to receive them there's a meeting here there's a meeting here is at this time it's in this location no institutionally there should be a body that says no you should do this yeah we're going to create a joint civil litigation mm. with the plaintiffs who are the victims yeah. of that hostile environment yeah yeah you are the defendant the government. Mm. Javid made the mistake of mentioning a potential 200 million. Mm. You're bad. As a body, 
we merely need to find an insurance underwriter yeah, yeah, who will yeah. underwrite the case of a joint civil litigation. And that's the beginning, Having yeah. that clarity, mm. now we can pay our solicitors to start the case mm. and tell you when you're going to turn up, mm. what time you're going to turn yeah, up, yeah. what location you're going to turn up mm. in your courts mm. because you're a human rights abuser. Yeah. Now, based on our money, our agenda mm. and our advocacy mm. we are going to sue you the government on behalf of the plaintiffs yeah you are the defendant you cannot be the rapist and the prosecutor yeah, at the, at same, the, same, at the time. same time yeah, yeah yeah this is a conflict of interest yeah yeah the entire point of an ad pack is that we hold you accountable mm. and you will be held accountable yeah but you see a body when they release a national letter to mm. the government you are being sued mm. in a joint civil litigation underwritten by this insurance company yeah, yeah. who will pay our solicitors and it is inevitable that we will win well, obviously, obviously and the they... plaintiffs mm -hmm. will get what they're entitled to mm. for pain and suffering mm. loss of earnings mm. yeah. loss of property mm. loss 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 yeah we make that decision so the whole point of an ad pack is that we are a body which is representative of african diaspora people mm. not asking you so you see the difference between yeah, yeah, yeah. fighting racism and circumventing it mm. based on autonomy okay. this is 21st century garveyism yeah yeah it's the epitome of it <laughs> you're putting garveyism now there's there's something else if we have to go back to the african continent mm -hmm. the african union uh, is aware of the regions Absolutely. of africa as you described at the very beginning the obviously the north south east central and so on and in the sixth region which is the diaspora which yes. obviously and there is a lot of money as you're aware going to mm. africa from from the diaspora four, you're, you're, is yeah, huge. you're looking at billions four, four to five billion a year yeah uh, Nigeria alone probably take a billion or two, yeah, you know, Ghana is another one and um, obviously Uganda and so on. Now, the African Union is aware of this. Mm -hmm. Now, you've tapped into something that's uh, involving the African Union and the African Union, you will need a voice to go to the African Union and say, this is the voice we have. Can we say something? Can we also stand and say, on a decision like this, like this, we will make a stand on it. Absolutely. Other than the, you know, because of the amount of money that goes, remittance that goes to Africa, mm -hmm. their voice will be heard and they will listen, regardless of what they, they don't want to hear sometimes. Based depending on, on that. who mm. pays the piper. Exactly. Who's the tune. Yeah. Yeah. China has taught us. Yeah. yeah. Europeans have taught us. Mm -hmm. It's merely to learn the lessons. Yeah. The uh -huh. difference is we have virtuous intent. Mm. Now, as opposed to China and yeah. Europeans. The, the Jews have a bigger say, and you said this at the beginning, and I'd already seen it. Anyway, it, they have a bigger say in what mm. goes on in Israel. Mm. And that's, at the moment, why the current prime minister is still in office. Because the outsiders, he has had, he has such high support from those outside. And that's because why he represents their interest. Their interest, yeah. Irrespective of his criminal activity. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, how is this going to be achieved mm. when we're looking at an African continent mm. that is already divided, that African Union, which already uh, me and my producer today we are speaking about the lady who was representing us in New York, yes. who had to be resent back because of the interests from outside, because mm. of what she said and so on. I wouldn't want to go in details of that, but the union itself is divided and, over this. And, and we I'm also wondering, understand that there was a North African uh -huh. who was the president at the time. Yeah. Who fired her? Yeah. Now, APAC, APAC mm -hmm. is going to have a big way in which, if it is to convince Africa, if it to have such a big say, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to find out how, how are you, you going to, to, yeah, to go mm -hmm. in there? Because so many people have tried to go in there, but because of the various countries that are involved, each country has a say. And it's difficult. Even the EU, uh, the AU sometimes doesn't listen to itself. Absolutely. Now, how is this one going? How 
are they going to reach into that park? So I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> so remember, I speak to you about being a reverse engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I look at what works. Mm -hmm. What does it work? Quantifying it, mm -hmm. deconstructing it, yeah, and then reconstructing it, right? Mm. Okay. So then I ask. That would be interesting seeing how you do it in Africa. In African, so then I in ask African myself, context, yeah. So then I ask myself. Yeah. What reason? Did every African leader go to China? Ah. <laughs> mm, okay. I have a clue. Small clue. Yeah. Then I ask myself, what reason did every African leader go to Russia? Yeah. No problem. I have a small clue. Ah. What reason did every African leader come to Britain? Mm. As the so-called Commonwealth, where the actual wealth yeah. of the commoners isn't so common. Yeah. Okay, I got it. So what do we say? He who pays the piper calls the tune. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. God bless. As you, as you so said, so once you quantify the economics of the diaspora uh, nationally in Britain, well, then you duplicate the model in handing off to delivery partners globally. Mm -hmm. Remember, I spoke to you about a crypto coin. Yeah, you did. You the did. Sable Ascent coin. You did, yeah. Well, now we get to circumvent the Yiddish Swift system, right? Mm. So, in essence, we could call this on its own blockchain our own central banking system, true mm. or false? Mm. Yeah, and I'm wanting a what? A central? We could call it our own central banking system. Okay. You see, if you have a cryptocurrency mm. on its own blockchain, you have a wallet. Institutions can have a wallet. Mm. Your family and the continent can have a wallet. Yeah. And we have freedom of money movement globally. Of, of course, yeah, yeah, of course. And it can't be frozen by mm. Yiddish tricks. Mm. No, it don't, like don't. It, can't. it can't, yeah, yeah. So now we have something with balances, measures and checks that we know is universally safe. Yeah. That we know our banking delivery partners can tap into. Mm. Mm. That we can underwrite with assets, which means there's very little fluctuation. Yeah, yeah. And it's a global vehicle. And then we go to our family in the African diaspora region. Yeah. Well, you see, now the diaspora region has weight behind it. Mm. Economic weight. Yeah. Not hyperbole and intellectual masturbation. Mm. Something tangible. Mm. Economic weight of the diaspora. Yeah, yeah. So you see, now when they represent the interests of the diaspora who act as a nation, mm. uh, 1.2 trillion US. 350 billion United Kingdom and you add to that territory by territory as a war of attrition when Nigeria produces a billion you see now we have the attention of everybody mm. right mm -hmm. okay now it comes how does everybody in the African Union plug into the diaspora region yeah yeah so that when we have returnees and investors mm. they purchase land once when they invest in economic opportunities, they're not going to be fleeced mm. because we have balances, measures and checks to protect them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first of all, the arduous journey of creating the institution mm. that's going to represent the interests of diasporans, because we know the economic wealth just based course, on the remittances. Of course, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. remember, we're going to live our lives and send money home. Mm. What happens when we actually seek to repatriate yeah. and invest? Mm. That is a an economic mountain. It is, he yeah. He who pays the piper calls the tune. Mm. And unlike the Chinese, mm. you don't have a 500-page contract mm. which says we're going to take your shipping ports. If yeah, you if, you don't, if you default, yeah. Because it's not a loan. Mm. It's direct investment, mm. which increases or decreases your GDP. Yeah, yeah. Question. It increases or decreases your GDP? It, it increases it. Okay. Yeah, yeah it increases it. Yeah. Yes. Mm. I see your point. I see your point. It's there uh, to be it's, made. It's, yeah, it's there to be made. Uh -huh. The practical side of it has to be made. It now, has to be yeah. practical mm. economics mm. based on an African ecosystem. Mm. You see, this is what I have done. Mm. In the beginning of my life, I would have a business partner. I had very little experience. I said, mm. lift experience, there's no substitute for it. Mm. So now I look at the cliff's edge. On either side of the cliff's edge is a rope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my partner's holding the rope. We've got a foot like that. He's holding the rope. He's got his foot. It behooves you yeah, yeah. to keep an equal weight there. Oh, yeah, because yeah. Because we rely yeah. on each other. Yeah, yeah. You see, in the universal laws of reciprocity, yeah. 
must be practiced by Africans, not just everybody else. Of course, yeah. Now, if you eat me, you can eat me once. Mm. But when we have a relationship based on reciprocity, mm. we now have something that can go on for perpetuity. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that it's best, yeah. is economic power. Mm. So now, when Africans are assassinated by state-sponsored hitmen, mm. otherwise known as law enforcement, mm. You no longer shoot in a black man. We're not Palestinians. Now we are African diasporans, mm. and you have a weight that will come down in your nation. Yeah, yeah, that's the key. One other area, which uh, I didn't see in your in your constitution, and um, which you you're probably not tapping it, but which is very good to tap it because Absolutely. there's a, because there's a lot of money in it. The sports, footballers from Africa mm -hmm. are coming into you, and there's a lot of money. Yes. They, 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 they who I should say the Adam West, the uh, Canoes, the uh, drug bars, mm -hmm. uh, and you know there, there are so many of them now. And each year the number is growing. Mm -hmm. They are built in Africa. The French have got even camps in in, in uh, Senegal and. Uh, hey, in, Arsenal yeah, was testimony to that twenty years ago. Yeah, I know. Thing. So the, the the point I'm trying to say is that uh, APAC doesn't have an area inside where it's saying look we're going to look at the sports uh, people coming the human resource I, I look at that as a part of the human resource because the human resource is what has made china what it is absolutely today. now if africa looks at her human resources even those that are still mm -hmm. in, in africa and those that are here in one way or another and you getting involved or the organization getting involved with the professional footballers or professional athletes running or professional anybody doing sports yes. basketballers there's a lot of money there there's a lot of money. is there any however yeah look is there any way we're not going to that? become yeah football intermediaries <laughs> there's lots of fish in that water yeah yeah, yeah. this is crowded water yeah we live in the blue ocean space <laughs> the whole point of the trust uh -huh. is that you could donate that as any high net worth individual yeah within your interests. Okay. So if we have the African diaspora region, mm. and I just said to you, he who pays the piper calls the tube, mm. and you have high net worth African individuals, mm. be they footballers, be they a Dangotti, be they actors, entrepreneurs, any, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> irrespective of their profession. Mm. With our tax accountants, you make a donation, mm. which you offset against taxation. Now, if you're a high net worth individual, we know that's going to be a substantial payment. Yeah. So forget about your real earnings, which some footballers do now. Just your offsetable donation against taxation is enough for us to make a powerful dent in what the Chinese competition are doing yeah, yeah. and the European competition are doing. Because remember, we're going to go with that war chest and not only purchase commercial freeholds in each of the territories yeah, yeah. so that we have bases where anybody lands. So take for instance, you need um, a, a town hall or you say this is a high commission and we go and purchase these 10 million pound euro buildings across the globe. Anytime any of these guys are doing business from any of the nations, this is where you stay. All oh, right, yeah. This is where you meet. Yeah. This is where you do trade. Yeah, yeah. Similarly, we bring that money home mm. and we set up the trade and enterprise buildings. Ghana, Nigeria, Mali, you name them. Mm. Now, what do they become? They become, what do you have here? You have a trilateral commission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have our actual African trilateral commission? No, we don't. We no, don't. we don't. Yeah. Is it about time we thought about financing those? Mm. Because then we change the terms that trade is done under. Mm. So now you can't just land on the ground with the silent helicopter blades. No, 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 no. And you pick can. up resources and leave. No, no, no. Because you are but, breaking our laws. Yeah, yeah. And you see, once you have the economics there mm. to create your trade buildings, mm. then you say. We're going to set up a court for reparations, for reparatory justice in Africa. The same way yeah, the yeah. Jews did it in Israel mm. and said, you committed war crimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the reparatory courts 
across African nations in which we are supposed to extrapolate you from here and try you there. Yeah. Do you think you can just take Africans to the Hague? No, it won't happen. Because you made a decision to take Africans to the Hague, yeah, right? Yeah. And what do you do? Yeah. You go and you arrest them and you bring them there. Yeah. Are we not capable of the same? We're capable of doing that. We're capable of yeah, doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's the ideology yeah. and then the economics. Yeah. You see, once you understand the economics in yeah. the diaspora, yeah. you become very powerful about the shots you start to call. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. thinking about repertory justice. Yeah. You see, remember, in order for you to capitulate, as a European, you'd have to be forced, right? Yeah. Force comes from a superior weight. Oh. Not from begging. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Not from reason. Yeah, of course, the superior weight. Superior the, power. Superior power with money, obviously. Mm -hmm. Money. If you have the money... And you, also yeah. security, which yeah. we won't go into, yeah. understanding yeah. the nature of security. I can, However, I your security must grow at the same rate as your wealth and influence, so yeah. you can't protect yourself. No, you, uh, and then you have no sovereign rights. Uh, yeah, it's exactly. You don't have that. Now, yeah. these things are all well done. and um, Potentially. Yeah. On paper. On paper. And the practical side it of is good. Mm -hmm. But the one other side which has always been a major problem when it comes to Africa is that somebody here in Whitehall or somebody in Brussels or somebody in Washington looks at something which potentially could be a danger to their income mm -hmm. and quickly say, uh, like Brother Bandaka said, look, I think we need to look at who are individuals behind it. Mm -hmm. What can we do? Not necessarily, to, um, I don't mean elimination as such, but to fight it. Why not? We, 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 without money as a best, the chances are somewhere, somehow, somebody is going to fight it. And mm -hmm. when he fights it, because of the financial backing he has, mm -hmm. the chances are it might not work. So is there a mechanism in place, which Mark Gavi once said, uh, we need to make sure that if this one goes away, another one is going to come in so that at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you're going to find it extremely difficult because that has been Africa's biggest problem. Absolutely. We don't, we don't have continuity of, uh, you, you know, the we leaders. We don't have a legacy program. Of, yeah, that we don't have that. Now, you guys behind it, have you got that in mind that this, if this thing happened, there is point B and there is point A. How are you going to, how, how are you going to find that? I will never go into the finer details of ah, security. Okay, okay, okay. But the first thing I said to you is that your security must grow at the same rate. Mm. as your wealth and influence yeah so understanding the nature of a black water in the united states yeah. private security mm. if you understand this concept very well mm. in that anybody can set up a private security mm. and recruit from the military mm. it's as much as you need to know yeah exactly, exactly and then you don't need to go into the logistics of mm. that yeah because racism is a team sport Mm. which is not just economic, it's not just a socio-economic sport, mm. it's also a military-industrial complex. Mm. Now, unless you are taking the time mm. to build out your own private security venture at the same rate, mm. which is of a global nature, yeah. then you can't protect yourself. All right. And then all of this becomes hyperbole and intellectual masturbation. Mm. So, I revert back to what I always say. <laughs> your security yeah, yeah. must grow at the same rate as your wealth yeah. and your influence. However, I would never speak about the logistics of security, of security yeah. because we're all aware yeah. of what security is. Yeah. The CIA mm. was a private mm. cabal of men mm. who were wealthy, mm. who had a particular ideology based yeah. on their European supremacy. Mm. Why would the U.S. government accept this body, which was a private institution? Mm -hmm. Because it was politically expedient for them to realize a similar objective. Mm -hmm. This is an adversary here using mm -hmm. somebody for black bag ops over there, like the Bay of Pigs, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. It's unsuccessful. Yeah. Yeah. And when you criticize that said cabal of men, your contract was canceled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Instant Good. memory loss. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we've got quite a number of people that have phoned us. We're coming towards the end of the program. And um, um, Ronnie Wava says he likes the program. It's great. Uh, Vanessa, 
is also telling me that um, she's watching and she's enjoying everything you have to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite a number of others uh, that have uh, said, well done, um, uh, uh, you know, well done the TV, well done Stephen. Um, it's, it's quite interesting. Now we've, we've got less than four or five minutes to go before the program comes to an end. And um, the, uh, everything that we've talked about is interesting. Everything is uh, quite good. And the way that you are going to market, the way the APAC is being marketed mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is the, one of the first things that I, I did is to try and see how many people are coming in, how many people know about this organization. And the fact that the, the, the whole uh, APAC is, is at its infancy stages. Mm -hmm. I've go, even gone as far as seeing the African Union to see what the interest could be with the mm -hmm. African Union, which is quite there. But they are looking mm -hmm. for the, they are waiting for the numbers. I, I want us to end on a note of, of, of marketing. Because so, it's a I'll say very quickly. Yeah, so yeah. First of all, mm -hmm. should we everybody should be aware of the website. Can, 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 we, can we begin with the youth, among the youth? Say, for example. We will. But yeah, the first thing I want to do is make mm -hmm. people aware of the website. Mm -hmm. So, www.adpac.net. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we've released is a number of census. Mm -hmm. So we've got an eligible voter census. Okay, okay. We have a national um, population census so that we can quantify our numbers mm -hmm. and then break them down into the boroughs and the regions where we live. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of youth, we have an entire youth wing. And our agenda is to train... 20 young leaders mm -hmm. year in year out mm -hmm. who will enter the world of politics okay. but with an african lens not a european lens mm -hmm. now they may end up in banking they may end up in the entrepreneurial space mm -hmm. they may end up in politics mm -hmm. but they will have had a pol socio-political training mm -hmm. that actually enables them to understand the landscape and the reality of this landscape and how to circumvent the traps mm. and actually take advantage and navigate the waters of this landscape. Okay. That's, a, that's interesting. Mm. That's interesting. And it's necessary because you spoke about something very important. Mm. And we don't necessarily create a succession plan. Okay. So now if you create 20 of these leaders a year, five years in, you have mm. 100 of these young of course, leaders. Of course, of course. Yeah. Now you're changing the face of a generation. Mm. Now, not only that, but they actually stand to support each other as an alumni. Mm. Now, when you can go into an alumni, there is no question of if you're going to support me, is how you're going to support me. Mm. Because the answer is always yes, based on the ethics mm. that you've gained from the training that mm. you've received. Okay, that's great. Um, I have to say thank you extremely, you know, thank you very, very much if I could go into all the extreme of what we've discussed. And I do hope that, um, you know, I wish the organization all the best, and I wish all the Africans uh, would actually join. So this Thank is you. this is in, it's in, for all Africans. Yeah, yeah, it's in our interest. Although uh, I wanted to say something about the, the the Caribbean and the other people, the African. I'm just going to say something that, very quickly yeah, about the Caribbean, yeah, yeah. because don't discount that any territory mm -hmm. we are the african diaspora mm -hmm. and the same relationship that we're creating with the african diaspora region mm -hmm. we're going to create with caricom okay caricom and yeah caricom yeah that's the so opening. every region where we are mm -hmm. we are going to close those skills personnel and organization games okay and for anyone who wants to get in contact with us my personal email is d dot okay at adpac.net okay we can find that um, I just want to, once again, thank you very much for coming to us. Thank you for the and, opportunity uh, to speak to your audience. And uh, telling us all about it. And I do wish the best of luck for APAC. Thank you. Um, thank you for viewing us. And I uh, hope we'll be together again next week for another edition of Africa Speaks. Thank you. And may God bless you.